Welcome to Lesson 12 Connections Part 1 of the SDS2 Getting Started series. In this we will introduce you to SDS2 Connections. One of the strong points with SDS2 is not only does it design connections but it actually develops connection. Generally when a person says that their software designs a connection they look at a configuration in the model and produce a design output. With SDS2 we actually go in and develop the connection the same as I would when I was developing connections by hand. You would go off and start off with some assumptions that would be from setup and then you would go ahead and develop that particular connection trying different scenarios to go ahead and reach the required load for that connection. Also during the development of this connection the system looks at all the members that are connecting into the node checking for framing situations and then reevaluating accordingly. For example, if a member has a cope required due to a member coming into a column flange, such as a moment plate with stiffeners, the system will go ahead and compensate accordingly as it develops this particular connection. When it comes to the design and development of these connections, SDS2 allows you to go from full automation that is using the standards of the selected code and your setup values all the way down to manually building your own connections. SDS2 gives you a lot of variety allowing you to provide the connections that are required on the project. As we see in this connection input outline we have what is called an auto standard connection. This is a connection where the system will go ahead and use the selected code and the values from setup and then look at what we call an, is an auto standard table and then provide the connections depending on the conditions and scenarios. Within the member edit window this allows the user to go ahead and select the particular connection input type that they want to use instead of allowing the system to determine it using the auto standard connections. This is our full automation part. Then we move down to the set connection to user. Let's say for example the system has provided a connection and the engineer has requested a thicker plate for a gusset for example. Even though the system has developed the connection using a 3 8 plate, maybe the engineer is requesting a half inch plate for this particular area. He has a sketch for it. Well you can go ahead and override what the system did and set the connection to user. One very important point here is that you are now taking control of the design of this connection. You're taking away that automation from SDS2 and overriding the values that SDS2 provided. Therefore, you will also be taking responsibility. The user design connection, well, is exactly the same as a user, but allows us to create a form that you simply go ahead and apply to the members. So the system will develop the connection and then will change the values accordingly to the form. Again, this is simply replacing values. We have some other tools that you can use to try to get a connection. For example, when SDS2 is determining a connection, let's say, for example, that the connection fails for some reason. Let's uh, use web bending or buckling as an example. Well, you can go ahead and force the connection, which basically says, I know you failed, but I want you to build from the data that you have created this particular connection. And then you can go ahead and modify that accordingly. Then we have what we term as modeling the connection. With modeling connection, this is where you can either use SDS2 and then make manual modifications. Again, you can do them through the user field, but when it becomes graphical, you're actually going in and using manual tools as if you're reaching in the computer and moving holes, stretching material, and punching holes and adding welds. And then of course you have some other options for the modeling or graphical portion of a connection where you can go ahead and create what is called an assembly. Think of it as a 3D block of material that you can go ahead and apply or you can make intelligent 3D assemblies which is something called parametrics which allows you to do a little bit of programming if you're the programming type and allows you to build some connections. Let me show you what I mean by developing a connection. I'm going to turn these members here to solid. 
As we look at this connection, we can see that we have four rows of bolts in the outstanding leg. I'm going to edit the member. When the system designed this connection, it went in and developed it for the 34.7 kips. When the load is set to auto, that means it's going to use in setup what the values are to determine the loads. For example, 50% UDL. When I look at the design calculation, we can see here that the system is designing this particular connection and here are the limit states. The connection strength is actually good for 81.9 kips. Let's go ahead and change the value oops, to 82 kips for this connection. Remember we had four rows of bolts. Now because the system has multiple quantities of B12, we can see there's four of them, I can change all these connections at one time. I'm going to just change this particular connection on this member. Now I'm going to run it through my process and create solids. Now again, what happens with the process and create solids is that the system goes in, gathers the data from the setup, from the member, and then the system will go ahead and develop this connection. We use what is called comparative analysis. The system builds the connection from setup and it determines what's the capacity of that particular connection. Then it goes in and says, does this capacity that is determined, is it greater than the required load? If not, the system will go ahead and determine what is actually the limiting state on it. For example, let's make it simple. Let's say there's not enough bolt rows. So the system will go ahead and see if it's possible to increase the number of bolt rows to satisfy that particular load reevaluate the connection. Is the capacity of the connection greater than the required load? If it's yes, then it's, it's finished, it's done. If not, the system will go through and determine the next option. Maybe we can't fit in another row of bolts. Well, am I allowed to extend the connection below or do I need to put in a larger bolt diameter? This is what the system will do when it develops this connection. As we can see now, we actually have five rows of bolts. Let's go ahead and take a look at the design calculations on this particular member. That will be the right end. And we can see that this connection is now good for a capacity of 102.4 kips. We can also see that the limited state design is actually the bolt bearing on the web. This is my lowest capacity here and this is what's limiting this particular connection showing us the maximum capacity that we can use. For the next portion of the demonstration I'm going to move to our second floor. Let's go in here and add in a few construction lines real quick. Minus three feet. This way we'll have some points to go ahead and grab. This is critical. With SDS2, to get a connection to develop, you must attach a member to a member. In other words, SDS2 cannot attach to a piece of material. It must attach a member to a member. Let me go ahead and demonstrate this by adding in some material. We'll see this a little bit later for the material add. I'm going to locate the member to attach the material to. Let's go ahead and grab a rolled section. I'm going to select my first and second point to add in my material. Let's go ahead and make this a 10 by 15.3. Toe direction is going to be in. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Let's go ahead and rotate this a little bit around the Z axis. There we go. Go ahead and hit OK. It's asking for material dimension reference point. I'm going to locate that. Uh, let's say right at the corner of this material. Return. Now, I've added in a piece of material. Notice with SDS2, I've already selected the member to add it to. So as I hover on top, we can see that all this material is attached to this member. When I select green, we can see that all this material is attached to this particular member. Now, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add in a beam. Intersection construction line intersection construction line to keep myself on that same working plane 10 by 15.3 let's go ahead and leave this as an 
auto standard connection which we're going to learn about a little bit later and run this through process. Now as we look at this particular member we can see that there's no connection developed right here and as we look up here there's no failed message except for the right hand side that's another condition but at the left end where we're looking at the system turned it to a plain end this has nothing to do with the load the system just cannot provide the connection because it's attaching to a piece of material I'm going to turn this thing back to stick here and I'm going to use a stretch command and let's go minus three inches here what I'm doing is I'm stretching the material I'm going to mark these members and run them back through process to prove to you that the system still did not provide a connection because it's attaching to a piece of material now I'm going to remove this piece of material and add in a member in its place ten by fifteen point three let's go ahead and put that toe direction I'm gonna have it turned in we're gonna leave the connections as auto standard which we'll be discussing soon enough now we ran into the next issue well I am attaching to a member why did the connection not appear well the reason the connection did not appear here is because the system does not know which member is supporting and which member is supported. With SDS2 it needs to know which is the supporting, that is the carrying member, and which is the supported, that is the member being carried. I'm going to come in here and extend this member. Let's go ahead and move stretch. And I'm just going to go ahead and make this, oh, we'll go minus six inches just so that you can see now the system knows that this member right here and this member here we have the supporting and the supported member let's go ahead and run this back through process turn these to solid so we get a visual and we can see that the system has gone through and has attached this connection now right now the system is trying to determine this load and it's trying to reach 34.5 kips. Well, let's say that this particular member is just a simple outrigger and we want to go ahead with a minimum of six kips. At this end, later on, we're going to see how to fit that material up. Let's go ahead and run it back through process again. And we can see now that we don't have those doubler plates. The connection is not beefed up as much. We're going to come back to this connection a little bit later on let's go into my isometric again and turn this to solid in conclusion of this with SDS2 you must attach a member to a member also SDS2 needs to determine which is a supporting and supported members again supporting is carrying supported is being carried so if two working points come to the same point for a beam in the case that we just saw right here the system cannot determine which is a supporting or supported so therefore you have to extend that member past we're gonna fix this up so we have a nice clean edge later on when we get to the end of connection design